Welcome back, 937 The Ticket. We're here back again at Memorial Stadium on the Nico and I podcast. Here to my left, I have one of my former teammates, Omar Rogers. Omar is a 400 hurdler transfer down from Illinois. You're going to get to hear a bit about his story. But to, t- to kick things off, Omar, go ahead and tell us, why did you choose to come to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln? Honestly, came here and graduated from Southern Illinois with my bachelor's, you know. Well, grad school is expensive, you know. Wanted to try something new, have like a new, you know, scenery. Came on a few, went on a few visits, you know, went to Iowa, you know, Western Kentucky, came here and, you know, fell in love with the city, you know, fell in love with the people. It was just a great all around time, you know, coaches showed the love and, you know, I felt the love and, you know, I respected it. 100%. Me and Omar go a little bit back, you know, we were, we had a lot of 4 by 4s together last season, we trained together a lot. And so right now we're kind of in a bitter sweet spot. So I'm gonna have him describe to you the situation. But uh, some NCAA paperwork ended up getting mixed up for his fifth year, and we were hoping that he was gonna come back and run it up for one last year in the four by four for an outdoor season. But an eligibility injury thing went down. You're gonna hear the details here right now. All right. So boom, freshman year, I used to go to a school called University of Maryland Eastern Shore. You know, small HBCU Maryland. You know, went there. You know, coming out of high school, everybody feels like they're invincible. You know, you don't get hurt. You know, you're that guy. I went there, ran indoors, outdoors started. You know, I got hurt. I uh, messed up a ligament in my foot. I was on crutches for like two months. Wasn't, you know, wasn't happy there. You know, was sad. You know, when you get hurt, sometimes you get sad and depressed. And I was down bad, decided I wanted to transfer, entered the portal. And while I'm in rehab, the coach told me, he was like, oh, since you're transferring, don't come back to practice. Kind of basically kicked me off the team. And I just never went back to practice. I started living life like a regular student, you know, just like doing things. And then now that I'm trying to get my year back, they're saying that, you know, I was clear to my friend. They're saying now that my freshman year, I was clear to um, compete, but I choose not to. But I'm like, I was kicked off the team, so I couldn't compete. And now it's like, you know, the paperwork, you know, has the last word. So there's nothing I can do about it. So, you know, just got to take that L and move on. Man. That's an unfortunate situation, too, because like I said before, we were really expecting him to come back this year. We were going to be, you know, five, six guys deep for that 4x4, four four, man. And last year, we kind of had a bittersweet ending as well, regionals 4x4. Four four. We, we never had a year or uh, an event where we had all four of our guys healthy or all four of our guys running on the same peg. So we never got to experience that. So you never know. There might be some luck out there where some paperwork, fun, you know, falls through the files and he comes back. But so speaking of that, Omar, you're still here. You're pursuing your master's, correct? Yes. So go ahead and tell us, you know, what was it like being a D1 athlete and go ahead and running, run us by what it's like being a normal student now. The difference between that lifestyle, do you still like to train? Is, is, it, is it harder being a normal student? Was it was harder being a D1 athlete? Go ahead and walk, walk us through that. Personally, from my experience, it's definitely being a harder being a student athlete. Like, being a student athlete, everything you do is centered around track. Like, you know, people want to hang out, you know, you want to make plans with anybody. Anything you want to do, it's always, oh, you know, it has to be between a certain time because, you know, I have practice, practice, like practice, weights and everything. That's like four hours a day, you know, treatment, you know, dinner. So, like, anything I wanted to do as a, when I was a student athlete, I had to, you know, plan it around everything else I already had, you know, planned. But now it's like, since I'm not running track no more, which was like the core of my life, it's like I have, like, you know, a big gap in my day where it's just like, what do I do with this time? You know, I can get a job, I get an internship. I mean, I still work out, you know, it's like, it's in my core that I'm not just going to stop working. I still work out, you know, on a regular basis, but it's like, now it's like, I have so much free time. Like I usually, when I was a student athlete, I would wait till Sunday to finish my homework because I was so busy. But now my homework is done by Wednesday night <laughs> and I'm chilling the rest of the week. So it's like, I have so much free time now. It's like, damn, how do people, you know, like not be student athletes and then like still fail classes? Like, I don't know, man, but I have way more free time now, and it's definitely easier being a regular student. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's intensified as a student athlete, no doubt, and I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to talk to you here because you get to see both sides of it. You got to see what it was like being a D1 athlete and then being a normal student as well, and that's pretty funny what you just said there. You know, beforehand, your homework being procrastinated all the way until Sunday night, and then now it's just being knocked out on a Wednesday just randomly, and you're like, dang, what do I do with all this time, man? It sounds nice, and it's hard to fathom that, too, because, you know, like you, I've been doing track and juggling sports my entire life. Like, all I know is being a student athlete, oh, so... Man. I know that time's coming around the corner, but Omar, go ahead and tell us, while you were a student athlete, what was the hardest part about being a student athlete? What was the hardest part of your day? Was it balancing everything? Was it doing this? Was it the school side of things? Was it practice? What was the hardest part for you? Uh, don't get me wrong. Practice was always horrible, you know, but you know what Kobe says, you know, if it, if it's not hurting, then you're not getting better. So, you know, 
I loved practice, but I loved competing even more. But I think the hardest part of my day was time management. It might everyone's you know, everyone um, answers would be different, but I think mine was time management. Like I was horrible at time management, so I had to really get my stuff together. And, you know, that was the biggest challenge. To me. Like you know, I was fine with school and practice and stuff. Like you know, I knew what I was signing myself up for with practice. So you know, I knew you know I had to put in that work if I wanted the results. Same thing with school, but the time management is what really killed me. Hey, I'm gonna give you guys a little story right here. So I remember last season, Omar, he was telling me, yeah, so I picked up this job at Walmart, you know, I'm working I'm stocking shelves. I'm like, oh, that's dope, man. So what are your hours looking like? You know, 11 to seven. I'm like, 11 to seven, so what, you just took the day off of school or what? He's like, no, 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 like 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you see, I have my classes online in the afternoon, so I can take those whenever. And I, I sleep from eight <laughs> all the way until about three, and I can show up to practice. I'm like, bro, what? And then this dude right here still gets fourth to the Big Ten Championship, still goes to regionals and puts up a respectable performance, and has just been balling out the entire year, splitting 46s in the 4x4. And I'm like, how does this dude balance everything? So you say your time management's bad, but that's honestly impressive to me because I've never heard of anybody being able to balance an 11 to 7 night shift, come back in the day and still be a D1 athlete, a functioning D1 athlete. But this man right here, he's just cut from a different cloth. So Omar, in this next answer, I'm going to need you to give me some censorship, but what is the most what's a fun day for omar rogers looking like what's what's something that you like to do your do on your free time what what what's relaxing for you what do you enjoy what's what's just a, a chill day for you honestly man i'm a big gamer you know i knew 2k i knew madden i knew mortal kombat i knew <laughs> call of duty you know those four games just came out back to back to back so it's like you know i have a lot of games to play but usually you know i wake up you know make some breakfast game a little bit then, you know, I stop, do some school work, eat lunch, game some more. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, since I'm not running no more, like now, you know, I prefer to work out in the nighttime. You know, the gym is less crowded, you know, it's not hot outside, you know. So during the daytime, I just like do school work and play my game, you know, just chill in, the, in, the, in my apartment. And I wouldn't go outside until like nighttime. So, yeah, that's about it. Chill day for real. Sounds relaxing. Like I said, whenever we used to travel, he was, he used to always be the one to bring his PS5. So we were playing Madden each other, with each other, and I just remember those times, man. I used to just stay up like super late, <laughs> just messing around on the game after a track meet or something like that. So, yeah, that's actually pretty, a pretty fun memory I have of us together. So, Omar, go ahead. So to wrap up this podcast, so you're, you're closing out your career uh, as a Nebraska athlete. You, you're going into this next journey of your life. So where do you see yourself you know wanting to be 10 years from now after everything that you learned not even just from this university but everything as an athlete everything within school so right now I, i'm gonna guess your age like 22 23 23 he's 23 so you know by the age of 33 you know where would you like to see yourself going in life it's a deep question philosophical but you know as at the age of 23 you know what do you see for yourself in the future where do you want to be man at what 33 i could see myself you know settle down family Nice little two kids, you feel me? Nice yeah, I mean, house. I, I'm a type. I want to build my house from ground up. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you know, own some land, build a nice house. You know, maybe somewhere in the suburbs of New York, because you know I'm from New York. So maybe from like Queens or you know, stand. You know, yeah, Queens or Long Island. That would be nice. Even Jersey, I'll take Jersey. Uh, maybe in Texas. Texas is really nice. I like but. from South America originally. So you know, I, I love the heat. You know, I love the heat. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a family settled down, living, working, um, studying to be a community developer. So, you know, working a nice little community job, you know, being able to give back to my people, you know, where I come from and people that, you know, actually need the help. So, you know, that's where I see myself in 10 years from now. That's beautiful, man. Giving back to the community. And yeah, I forgot to, I should ask you that to start things off. From New York, from the Bronx, if you can't get it from his accent, but Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Not the Bronx, hey, Brooklyn. I apologize. I've been listening to too much Ice Spice, <laughs> man. You feel me? <laughs> but anyway, man, Omar, I appreciate you for being on this appreciate podcast, you, man. One of my close friends right here. So this was 93.7 The Ticket, Nico and Knight, and we're out of here. Peace. Peace.